did Jesus pay for Adam's sin or for our sins? Welcome, this is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content related to cults and how to share the gospel with them. So I want to respond today to a challenge that was issued to me on one of my previous videos. It was by a person who is part of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but it's not uncommon to some of the other groups that we discuss on this channel as well. And so here is the premise of his statement. Jesus paid the price for sin, not for our sins. Sin came into the world because of Adam's transgression, not because of our sins. Jesus died paying the price for all sin, taking the liability of all sin that could be and ever was committed. However, simply by satisfying the demands of justice for our sins makes us liable to Jesus. So now we're not liable to the Father, now we're liable to Jesus. While salvation is a free gift in that we are freely resurrected because of Christ's resurrection, and we are freely redeemed from sin, not from our own sins, but for the sin that came into the world because of Adam's transgression, God would not be God unless he held us accountable for our personal sins. Otherwise, it would defeat the agency of man, which is what glorifies God. The agency of man, man choosing righteousness over evil, glorifies God. If that was taken away from us, and God will cease to be God, because he would not be just God, nor perfect God. So the question on the table, did Jesus die for our sin, or, or did Jesus die for sin, meaning the sin of Adam, generic sin, or is did he die for our sins? And another way to put this in classic LDS terminology, they'll refer to, is Jesus the Savior, or is he your Savior? That's what's at stake here. And so I did a little searching, and the, interestingly enough, when I just did a search saying for sin, when the two words are together, that actually doesn't take place. And at least in the King James Scripture, um, that phrase doesn't seem to be to pop up. But when I put in for our sins, which is exactly the contrast that he was trying to paint, then there was four verses that popped up. I want to read those four verses to you to get, to you to get an understanding that what he said in the statement he was making is absolutely false. And it's absolutely backwards. Okay, first one is 1 Corinthians 15, 3. The Apostle Paul says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. So this is in the statement of the gospel, the definition of the gospel by the Apostle Paul. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Galatians 1, 4. Who gave himself? For our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. 1 John 2.2, 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And so there is a contrast right there. And... Uh, the propitiation, if you don't know, a propitiation was a sacrifice to appease the wrath of a god. And so it met the, the it satisfied the judicial claim and of the wrath of God and the, 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 the payment that we owed for our sins. And Jesus died for not even our sins only, but also the sins of the whole world. And 1 John 4.10, herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And so very clearly you see that that is a false dichotomy to say that Jesus died for sin, Adam's sin, but not for our sins. The Bible clearly says he died for our sins collectively. Now, let's address his issue with agency. Because he seemed to be falsely thinking that agency uh, requires 
that we be held accountable for our sins and that we choose to do righteousness. The problem isn't whether we choose to do righteousness. The problem is our sins when we don't. And even if you did theoretically reach a point of reaching total righteousness, meaning you perfect sinlessness, flawlessness, and complete repentance, what would you do about all of the sins that you have committed before? Now, the LDS teaching is that Jesus only paid for Adam's sin, and so it makes all of us immortal, eternal, and that all of us are going to go, they were kind of universalists, and that they taught that all of us, because of Jesus and what he did, are going to go to a level of heaven. But only the highest level of heaven is living with God. So from a Christian definition, it's not heaven if you go to the other two levels. What determines what you go, which level you go to? Your own personal deeds, the law in which you have lived your life. Did you live by celestial law, terrestrial law, or telestial law? And so to deal with agency in relation to the gospel, Jesus paid the price for everyone's sins. But it's a question of whether you will choose to accept or reject him. I know that, that not all Christians teach that, that there's a choice. And I even believe that faith is a gift and that repentance is a gift that's granted by God. And so it's him who Jesus says, no one comes unless the Spirit draws him. But we know that God desires that all men come to the knowledge of the truth and to come to repentance. And so it's God's will and desire. And in, in, in one of these verses says that it was according to the will of God our Father that Jesus died for our sins. And so he desires a relationship with us. He desires for us to accept that free gift of God's grace. He desires for us to choose to want to be in relationship with him, to choose to repent, walk away from our sins. And that doesn't mean that we become perfect. It just means that we change our mind and we decide that we agree with God, that we are a sinner and that Jesus died for our sins and rose again from the dead. And we believe that and trust in it with all of our hearts and nothing else for our salvation. And so I hope that answers your question. If you've been asking the same question, if you happen to be LDS and watching this, know that we love you, we care about you, and we just want you to accept the message of God's free grace. We want you to know, like the Bible says, that you are forgiven, 1 John 5, 13. And so if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like this video if you haven't, if you like the content for today, and share this video with others who are in your life who enjoy content related to the cults and sharing the gospel with them. I want you to come back tomorrow where we're going to be discussing how or what are the, some of the best ways that you can help somebody who is recovering from a high-demand organization, otherwise known as mind control, otherwise known as cult? And so until next time, may God's grace be with you.